has begun. Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I'm from Women Who Explore. We're joined with Shannon from Alpine Sisters tonight. Uh, she's going to be sharing with us about feminine hygiene in the backcountry. Uh, we're going to give it like a minute or two for everybody to kind of get joined. And then um, just a reminder that we're recording this. So if you don't want to have your camera or your face on the camera, you can turn your video off. Um, and if you want, please use the chat for any questions as we go along. We'll try to kind of answer them as we go along, but we we will have a Q&A session at the end. So if there's anything that you um, forgot to ask earlier, you're welcome to ask it then, or again, just drop it in the chat, I always forget. Uh, and we'll do a giveaway at the end too. So for, Everybody who's just joined, if you want to just drop in the chat where everybody's joining from, it's kind of fun to see where we have people from. Oh, we have somebody from Australia. That's so cool. Fun. I love how people all around the world get to be connected this way. Um, okay, so I just a reminder to please make sure you're muted when you join. And if you have questions to please just drop them in the chat. And then just for those who just joined, we are recording, so you can choose to have your camera on or off. I'm also new to Zoom, um, so bear with me, ladies, tonight as I try to figure some of this out. You're going to be amazing. <laughs> And you're lucky to be new to Zoom. I feel like we've all been Zoomed out over the last <laughs> <laughs> um, So that's great. Cool. Well, when you're ready, Shannon, you can uh, jump on in and get started. I'm going to mute myself and I'll just pop on if we have questions in the chat. Perfect. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Um, hello, everyone. It's so good to see so many of you here virtually um, this evening. I'm really looking forward to having some really great conversations. So let's jump right in and um, I'll, oh, let's see if I can get that, there we go. Um, I'll briefly introduce myself in a moment and we'll do a few poll questions to see where you're at now. Uh, then we'll talk about leave no trace principles um, and environmentally conscious practices, which honestly I believe if we're going to be having a conversation about feminine hygiene, that's really at the heart of it. Uh, then we'll dive into what goes into a feminine hygiene kit, how to use the gear, um, and all of the best practices within that. So I know you're super stoked <laughs> to talk about poop, pee, periods, and bathing. So this is going to be a really fun night. Thank you for being here. Um, after all that, we'll also do another quick poll so I can kind of understand what, um, what to do in future presentations. And we'll wrap it up with the Q&A session and the giveaway winner. So... If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to just comment um, and ask in the box, the comment box. I definitely prefer more interactive experience, but I know it's not really easy to do with a virtual setting. So um, feel free to just pop those questions and Lindsay will let me know. Uh, all right, without further ado, hello, my name is Shannon Kelleher. Um, I'm the owner of Alpine Sisters, which is a small online outdoor store that I created for women um, almost a year ago a little over a year ago now. Uh, <laughs> this has been a long time coming for over a decade. I'd had this, you know, had this dream of opening my own store, um, but it wasn't really until late 2020 that I had this idea of making a curated gear collection for women specifically. Um, after I had my daughter, I really wanted to create a more inclusive space for her to explore the outdoors. And it was actually the feminine hygiene kit that kind of started everything. So um, as I thought about <laughs> the challenges that I faced myself while having my period in backcountry and the lack of education that was out there uh, when I was younger, especially while I was traveling with, you know, predominantly men in the early, the early years, um, and surprisingly received a lot of really unhelpful advice um, from members of the outdoor community about how to manage it. Oftentimes it was, oh, you shouldn't go. So yeah, anyway, so tonight I'm going to share with you what I've learned um, over the past 15 years so that hopefully I can spare some of that trial and error um, that I went through myself. Or if you're already a seasoned backpacker, um, maybe you can learn some new strategies to share with others. Full disclaimer, 
not every method discussed tonight is going to be what is best for you and your needs. So, you know, your body best, listen to that. When creating this presentation, I really try to be mindful of people's different comfort levels, best practices to keep nature safe and um, pristine, and also everyone's financial situations. Um, I also recognize that the material I present tonight might not include every possible method. Um, if you have a strategy that you use and love that isn't included, please, please share in the comments. Um, I see this tonight as an opportunity for all of us to learn from each other. All right, we're gonna start real quick with a few poll questions. So this will kind of help me see where you're all at right now and where you um, where you end up being, or where you will end up at the end of this evening. So Lindsay, I don't know if it's possible to do that first poll question. Um, we're going to do, or do I need to stop sharing my screen first? <laughs> I think maybe let me pop on here. Okay, so we're doing the first one. So just think for a moment, um, if you are planning to backpack, uh -oh. um, <laughs> uh, I feel you're gonna answer this, uh, oh, sorry. Relaunch, there we go, okay. Here it comes to everybody. There we go. Um, I feel confident in how to use my gear for backcountry hygiene. So either one, A, definitely, I've done it many times and feel extremely comfortable. Uh, B, somewhat, I've used my gear a few times, but I am still uh, learning good systems for myself. Or C, never, I've never done feminine hygiene in the backcountry yet, and I'm excited to learn some tricks. All right. okay, I think we probably wrapped up, so I'll just end it and then I'll share the results with everybody. Awesome. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I'm actually going to take a picture of this because I'm really curious. So it looks like most people are um, kind of like familiar with using some of the gear, but um, looking to maybe do something, to, uh, learn some new strategies. And then we also have quite a few, hey, <laughs> haven't done this yet. So that's really cool to see that. And for those of you who feel really comfortable with it, I'm uh, very curious. I'm hoping that you'll chime in um, when I ask some other questions later on. Um, if you can share your experiences, that'd be awesome. Uh, so question number two, if you can pull that one up, Lindsay. All right. Uh, I have backpacked while having my period. Oh, here, you can see the, oh, I guess not. Um, I have backpacked while having my period. A, yes, I have a good system that works for me. B, yes, but I am learning new methods that might be a better fit for me. Um, C, I've backpacked, but never on my period. Or D, I've never backpacked before. And I realize this may not apply to everybody if you're not currently um, having a period, so. Feel free to not answer if that doesn't apply. Okay, I think we're good. Ah, okay. Okay, so, gosh, yeah, there's a lot of people who um, haven't, oh, a lot of new backpackers or hopeful introduction Backpackers, that's exciting. Yay. All right. Number three. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I think we have one more. So yes. here we go. Thank you. Uh, what kind of menstruation management do you plan to use in the backcountry or do you currently use? Tampons and pads, menstrual cup or disc, period underwear, birth control so you don't have to have a period um, or something else? All right. Here we go. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. So there are a lot of people who are very interested in 
and using menstrual cups. Um, some who are more comfortable with tampons, period underwear and birth control. Okay, very cool. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay, so much. That just kind of gives me a good idea of where, where we're at right now. So, um, so we're gonna do a quick whiteboard exercise. Let me see if I can figure this out. Stop the screen share maybe. Um, you're gonna write in just a moment, the first thing that you hear of when you hear backpacking on your period. So let me see if I do this, share. Oh, <laughs> clearly you can see where I initially tried that. Okay, so you should all be able to um, write on here. There are, let's see, there's like a text button right here and stuff like that. So if you want to go and just kind of um, write what you um, what you think of when you think of back. <laughs> oh, is this? Does that say heavy? I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Annoying. Okay. Hassle. <laughs> a second for the <laughs> for annoying uh, chafing oh yes okay we will definitely talk about that later okay all right um i don't know if there's anybody who was able to do it in the chat instead but um let's see okay so we'll we'll talk about a few of these Oh, I see something down there. And I, oh, oh we're just seeing issue the with the smell. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple of ladies said that you can share in the chat too if you don't know how to use the writing tool. Although I'm really digging watching people handwrite this. Oh, bears. Okay. We will talk about that as well. Carrying it out was somebody commented. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Dirty hands. Don't want to change a cup with dirty hands. Messy. Okay. Cramps. Yeah. Ow. That sucks. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'll stop for right now. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, we're going to talk about, I think, all of those. So um, let me share my screen again. Here we go. We had a couple late, late ones come in that said, keeping it away from waste with limited space and bear canister, period poops to, uh, and then waste and food. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of the same ideas. Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. All right. Um, so we're going to change gears and actually start talk, start by talking about leave no trace briefly, because again, it's at the core of why and how we do all of our backcountry hygiene practices. Um, so for those of you who are unfamiliar, Leave No Trace is a set of outdoor ethics that help us protect our wild spaces and also allow us and those who come afterwards um, to enjoy the outdoors. All of the principles that are listed on this are, are listed on this slide, but for the sake of our conversation just about feminine hygiene in the backcountry, we're going to focus on just a few. So the first one is plan ahead and prepare. You want to anticipate your needs before heading out into the backcountry and make sure that not only do you have the right gear to leave the least amount of impact, but that you actually know how to use all the gear ahead of time. Like on the trail is not the time to use it for the first time. Um, <laughs> um, I always use a trip list so that I don't forget any, to pack anything. And I actually created a feminine hygiene trip list that I will share with you all um, in the resources later. But one thing I really want to note is that even if you're suppo not supposed to have your period and you're still menstruating, always pack your period gear, like always. Um, even if you just had your period a few days ago, um, or if you're normally regular to like the day, um, which I'm very envious of you if you are, <laughs> but um, sometimes that physical exertion of backpacking can change your cycles. Um, so it may come early or maybe even later. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into the gear specifics too. But uh, the other leave no trace principle I really want to highlight is disposing of your waste properly. Whatever you pack in, you have to pack out. This doesn't just include, you know, food stuff. It unfortunately includes tampons and pads if you're using them. We'll get a ton more into this later. Um, another leave no trace rule I want to emphasize is respecting wildlife. 
you know, we think a lot about um, storing food properly to prevent wildlife from eating it. But remember, if you're using those tampons and pads, toothpaste, soap, um, all of those items also need to be properly stored. So uh, because they can attract um, and potentially harm animals if they're consumed. So make sure you're using those designated bear poles and lockers if they're provided or bear canisters or sacks. Um, even if there aren't any bears where you're camping, I don't know if anyone's camped anywhere with like raccoons, there is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> so, um, you know, all these animals, if they become too used to humans and have to be, you know, they have to be put down a lot of times. So I can't emphasize the importance of storing your scented gear. So including those used tampons and pads, unfortunately. Um, the, finally, I just wanna remind everyone that being considerate to others is so important. Uh, many of us go into the wild to enjoy pristine Hello nature back. and nothing ruins a view. <laughs> oh, I hear baby, it sounds like, oh my gosh. Sorry, that makes my heart so full. Um, <laughs> nothing really uh, kind of ruins a good moment than like seeing someone else's poop or toilet paper um, when you're having like this awesome view. So just saying. All right, so that's leave no trace. Um, I'm gonna show you in just a moment some of the essentials and options you have to create your unique backcountry feminine hygiene kit. But the first quick note about traditional versus reusable gear. First and foremost, get the gear that works for you with regards to cost. Um, I get it, backpacking is like a, <laughs> an unfortunately huge financial investment. And normally I would recommend always going to buy used gear, um, but you can't really do that with feminine hygiene products for the most part, for obvious reasons. Um, I will, however, note that traditional gear that can be used a single time does tend to be more expensive in the long run. So if you're thinking that you're going to back, I saw that there were a few newbies to backpacking. Um, if you're thinking that this is something that you might wanna do um, a few times at least, it might be worth it for you financially um, to invest upfront um, just a few two cents. But again, it's more important to me that you go out there. So do, do whatever is within your means, honestly. I used to be an AmeriCorps volunteer. I made like $4 an hour. It was insane um, <laughs> and was trying to backpack at the same time. So I got some really creative methods back in the day with how to uh, find some good gear for cheap. But anyway, um, okay. So First and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to pack some kind of bag or bags um, to carry everything in. Uh, you can use a Ziploc, which is fine. Um, I feel like I know some women who like <laughs> will have a Ziploc bag for their feminine hygiene kit for like years. It's so funny. They're so dedicated to trying to like preserve it. Um, there are other options out there, <laughs> like something like this. Um, the a stasher bag, which you can just like clip it right onto your bag and it holds everything. And it, um, you can also use a dry sack, which are really helpful and useful. And they come in so many different sizes. So um, that's a really good option too. Also nice to kind of keep your gear protected from the elements. Um, you're also gonna need, let me see. I can't see if everyone else can see me right now. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Um, so, you're gonna need a backcountry trowel to dig cat holes with, um, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. But yes, you could use rocks and sticks, but I know personally, if you've ever tried to like dig um, a six to eight inch hole um, with a rock or a stick, it's not always the easiest, um, or like if you have to go, like trying to do that is really tough. So something more like this, um, it's called a deuce. It weighs less than an ounce. You can just clip it on. I think is well, well worth it. Um, one of the most important things in your feminine hygiene kit though is your soap. So I say this because it's so, so important to your health and your safety that you're not introducing any harmful bacteria or viruses into your body. So whether you're on your period or just in handling everything down there, or even if you're just eating or you know doing things with your eyes for contacts or glasses, um, I really, really encourage you though, to only get biodegradable soap um, if you're gonna be in the backcountry. There are so many great affordable options out there. Excuse me. Um, but this is like the one piece of gear I really ask you to be mindful of um, so that we can continue to protect those outdoor spaces. Whether you're using, uh, let's see. Oh, 
something like this. Um, little travel size Dr. Bronner's is great. It's biodegradable. Or um, you can either, either like use a soap bar and stick it in like a Ziploc bag or like, I love, just recently discovered these um, beeswax wraps. You can wrap up your little bar of soap and like bring just the amount that you need for your trip and then stick it in your bag too. Uh, let's see. So there was somebody in the original Instagram post that got deleted <laughs> who had asked about poop. And I am so happy to announce I have a full five slides dedicated to this very topic. So it's your lucky day. Um, it might sound a little bit silly, but talking about where we poop is so essential. Um, it helps minimize the disease um, being spread to other visitors and also helps maximize the decomposition of your waste to ensure that we're keeping everything wild and natural again. Um, there are some areas too that are like really biomes that are really sensitive um, to our waste being there. So we'll talk more about that too in just a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. But so when, whenever possible, the best place to poop is a toilet or an outhouse. I've been backpacking in some places where they actually have outhouses, like way in the back country. It's like the best thing ever, especially when you have like those beautiful mountains. <laughs> There's like this little toilet structure. Um, but <laughs> um, if that's an option, please use it. If there isn't an outhouse available, which unfortunately most places don't, um, <laughs> but you'll have two options. So you can either A, dig a cat hole, or B, pack it out if regulations um, or conditions don't allow for it. And so we'll talk about those now. Mm -mm -mm. All right, cat holes, what are they? What do you do? Um, first thing you're going to do is walk 200 feet away, which is about 70 big steps away from any water sources, campsites, or trails. I'm going to repeat that so many times tonight. You're going to be like, okay, Shannon, we get it. Um, <laughs> remember, the whole point of this is to try and prevent the spread of disease to others who come after you. And also, no, excuse me, um, to keep everything nice and clean for others to enjoy. Um, you're going to want to try to avoid spots where you think runoff might um, go during like a storm uh, because it'll eventually erode and un yeah, um, dig up your nice cat hole before anything can even be de uh, decomposed. So if you can find a sunny area too, that's a plus. Um, the dream spot would be somewhere where they have like really rich soil near a downed log or on a hill. Um, so once you find that dream spot, or if you can't, just whatever spot you find, you're going to take your trowel or if you're a champion and you can do the sticks and whole, uh, rocks, by all means, uh, you're gonna dig down six to eight inches down, and then you're going to make it four to six inches wide. Um, that's the reason why we do this is because that's where those really good microorganisms like to hang out um, that are going to help actually decompose your poop. Next up, you're going to poop. Uh, when people ask me how to prepare for backpacking, I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, thinking about like the backpacking weight. I always say start creating a squat regimen as part of your daily routine, namely for this specific experience. <laughs> um, it may take a little getting used to with <laughs> your balance and aim, but uh, with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. Um, you're also welcome to use like a tree for some support, either like sitting on it like a chair almost or using a hand to kind of support yourself. But I am curious, does anybody else have some clever methods they've come up with for um, for pooping. Let's see something in the chat. How do I see this? Um, I don't have any other clever methods, but I do like your suggestion for the squat. That's a really good idea. <laughs> um, somebody did say new to backpacking. Can you, I think oh. can, it must be carry toilet paper or should we get it? I'm going to talk so much about that in just a moment. I am so glad you asked though. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So that is sort of just the basics of pooping. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to then talk about, so after you dig your hole, you do your business, then you need to wipe, right? So if you just asked this, this is perfect timing. Um, <laughs> but okay. Here's a, let me, I'm going back for just a moment. 
let's talk about if you are going to use TP um, toilet paper, make sure you throw that TP into your hole completely with your poop. Um, before I switched to a bidet, I would use like a stick to kind of pack it down into my hole to make sure it was at that like really good six to eight inch depth. Because what I see happen a lot of times is people will throw it in there, but it's not actually at the bottom of the hole, it's kind of at that surface and you're not gonna have it decompose then. So make sure it's really packed in there um, very well and down and just throw the stick in afterwards. Finally, you're gonna cover your cat hole with soil. Um, super side note, your poop trowel, this should never actually touch your poop, <laughs> just the soil. So um, this should never be in any way contaminated. Quick pro tip, when you get to your campsite at night, um, I really recommend digging multiple cat holes, or you can even do like one giant latrine. Um, so like a latrine would be, you know, you dig down six to eight inches, instead of doing it four to six inches wide, you just like keep going <laughs> and make kind of this big trough. Um, and that way you can, you know, in the middle of the night, if you have to go, or if it's the morning and like, you're kind of desperate, um, you're not like having to take that time to dig your hole. Um, and if you're doing the latrine, you can go cover that spot, then go right next to it the next time and cover that. Um, just a little two cents. Um, okay. So there are the four main ways you're going to clean your poopy butt. Number one a bidet um, versus the bidet. It's a reusable peri bottle. So uh, all you do is fill it up with water, aim it at your butthole, squeeze the water out and ta-da, you have a nice clean butt. Um, I really love my happy bottom, which is why we're giving it away tonight in the um, giveaway. But here's just a quick video on how it works. It's pretty self-explanatory, but. So none of your, so when you use a bidet, um, again, that bottle inside shouldn't ever um, be contaminated because you're shooting the water at your butt. Like it's never coming into contact with the water or, or the nozzle itself. Um, there are so many different options out there. You can, I forget what they're called. There's this kind that you can like attach to a plastic water bottle. I personally have had a hard time with that because like it just wouldn't aim quite right. But I know some women who love it and swear by it. Um, so that stuff and it's it's smaller, which is nice. Um, but then you also have to carry a plastic water bottle. So there's pros and cons to every different method. But um, oh gosh, you know what? You could actually use, I don't know if anyone here has had kids, but um, after I gave birth, I was using like a Frida, a Frida Mom Perry bottle. If you're having kids or you already recently had one and have one of those, I would super recommend um, holding on to that and keeping it uh, for you. Okay, worries about UTIs with bidet option. Let's see. Stat <laughs> White whoops, the toilet paper, we're good there. That's amazing. Worries about UTIs with bidet option. Interesting. Um, so, Okay, I guess what I would say about UTIs is use your filtered water. Um, so just like you would use for drinking water, um, I would take my water bottle with the filtered water and then put it into my bidet. Um, that way, like you said, you're not kind of just like shooting a bunch of gross stuff at your butt. Um, let's see, Brie always spray front to back. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tatiana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spray from front to back, just kind of like how you wipe from front to back, although I'm going to break that rule in just a moment, but um, I do use a bidet and toilet paper. I've always packed out my toilet paper. I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that actually segues really well into my next one. Um, your second option, if you don't want to use a bidet, um, is to use toilet paper. 
depending who you talk to about this, this can be kind of a controversial topic. Um, so if you have strong feelings about that, you're welcome to share that. Um, I'm going to kind of share my opinion on it just from a more scientific standpoint. A little backstory, my, when my younger sister and my older sister are both scientists. So I was having this conversation with them. I was like, okay, so I know people talk about how we always have to pack out our toilet paper. They're like, do we really? And they're like, well, no. So here's why. Anyway, so um, if you are not going to be committed to making sure your toilet paper is down six to eight inches, then you need to pack it out. Um, but if you do dispose of it properly, making sure it's down there where it can um, decompose, then it, in most environments, that'll be okay. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> uh, my personal thoughts. Yeah, no, it, I mean, toilet paper is water soluble. Um, so it, it should decompose. Someone had asked in the Instagram uh, post that got deleted about like a, the most friendly, uh, eco-friendly option for toilet paper. And I know there are some toilet papers out there that are made from bamboo now. Um, excuse me. The only reason why that's kind of a more um, eco-friendly option is A, bamboo is a super sustainable, quick growing um, resource. Um, and B, I, I believe it does break down a little bit faster, but don't quote me on that one. Um, so the uh, third option if, to wipe your butt um, is to use leaves or rocks. Nature provides, it's great. Um, if you choose this method, <laughs> please know what poisonous plants look like. Um, nothing would be worse than like grabbing a bunch of poison ivy and like rubbing it all over your butt. I have been spending time in the outdoors for like over 30 years now. And for some reason I have this mental block when it comes to identifying poison ivy. So like, <laughs> doesn't matter how many times I try, like I just cannot get it. I feel like um, I'm really bad at that too. So I hear you on that one. I'm always like, go with the biggest, like maple looking leaf if I'm ever in that situation. The <laughs> one thing that, for it. Yeah. <laughs> or poison <laughs> oak. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's the worst. So yeah, you can use leaves or rocks, but do so only if you're super confident in yourself, which I am not. Um, option number four, like, like someone was mentioning in the chat, you can pack it out. And in some, there are some environments where you do have to pack it out. So um, there are alpine, win let me think, like alpine winter environments, rivers and canyons, uh, oceans and lakes, big walls, like if you're climbing up a, like a rock wall, um, and if you're on a really busy trail, you would use one or two things. So there's something called a blue bag, um, and then there's wag bags. Blue bags are kind of just like a dog poop bag. So you, you do your business and then um, in, take the bag, turn it inside out, pick it up like you would dog poop, um, wrap it up, and then put it into something, probably a Ziploc bag, um, into your pack and pack it out. Then there are also, let me show you. Uh -oh. I have lost it. Oh, wag bags. Um, so wag bags are they're called waste alleviation and gelling bags. They're pretty ingenious. Actually, let me pull up this video because it's awesome. There we go. Okay. This Start by opening me. the double bag system. They generally come with just enough TP to get your fingers dirty, so pack some extra. These magic crystals inside gel your waste and render it inert. Might need to make yourself a throne with rocks or logs for comfort and to anchor the bag. Now squat and get her done. Once you're done with your business, you can just deposit the toilet paper right in the bag. Go ahead and roll that up nice and tight. Oh, getting all that air out of there and seal it up. When you're done, make sure you pack it out by hiding it in your friend's pack. Just don't forget about it like you usually do with your banana peels. Then properly dispose of it in a trash can. And don't forget to wash your hands. All right. Um, can you guys hear that video okay? Yeah. <laughs> I like that they're like, put it in your bag, friends, back then. <laughs> oh, gosh. He cracks me up. Uh, but that's actually directly from Leave No Trace. So I really appreciated that video. But <laughs> so that is an option that you will sometimes have to use. So make sure that you check those local rules and regulations uh, ahead of time so that you know to bring them. 
Um, do, do, do. All right. Uh, oh, I see some questions in the chat. Oh, I can't see the video. Oh, no. Did you share your screen? Oh, never mind. Okay, good. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Uh, before I move on, thoughts about your favorite, what pooping method you think would work for you? We've got bidet, toilet paper, leaves and rocks, and pack it out. If you want to just throw throw a comment in the chat box real quick, I'm curious what seems most feasible for you ladies. Oh my gosh, I know. The bidets are amazing. <laughs> I'm going to try a bidet. I never have had one actually, but um, it looks awesome. I mean, because the toilet paper is fine. That's what I do now. And I pack my toilet paper out actually, but um, it's not always the fun. <laughs> Here's you know, another bonus about bidets. In case there's ever another panic toilet paper buy, you got this right at home. You're all set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, another wet wipes and pack it out. Awesome. Okay, cool. I'm very excited to see all these folks who are packer outers. That's awesome. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, let's talk about peeing. Talked about poop. It's time to pee. Um, so just like when you poop, even if you're just going pee, please walk 200 feet away from trails, water sources, and campsites. Um, you don't need to dig a cat hole unless you're going to be leaving your toilet paper, um, in which case you do have to dig that cat, ugh, cat hole so that you can make sure the toilet paper decomposes. Um, yeah, okay. Excuse me, it's been a long day. <laughs> also, how many times have, have you all seen like, Little little frustration here, seeing men just like stop off on the side of the trail and like go pee right there, and then it's like okay, well, no one really wants to like be right next to your pee. Plus, it's kind of not sanitary. Anyway, all right, my first and personal favorite option for wiping when you pee is called a pee rag, um, such as da da the cool cloth. Um, it's antimicrobial. It's just the coolest thing ever, but when I first heard about cool cloths, I'm going to be perfectly honest, like I was so grossed out by the idea of like reusing the same thing to wipe my vagina. Like it just grossed me out. Um, but I am a big believer in trying everything once. Um, <laughs> and the second I used my cool cloth on like one hike, I was, I was a lifer. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, also the, the lady, the sisters who like run Cooler cloth are hysterical. So if you haven't ever seen their account on Instagram, I highly recommend it. It's out of the out of this world, hilarious. Um, oh, but it's so fun. <laughs> They're amazing. They're so fun. Uh, Anastasia and Mare. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> um, what you're gonna do to wipe? Oh, I see a few more chats. Sorry, one second. Uh, I love my cooler. Yay! I'm all about the shake shake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, how often do you have to wash Kula? Good question. Uh, planning Appalachia through hike. Yay! I'm worried about how I may. Um, okay, so I'll get ahead of myself for a second. So if you're going to use a Kula cloth or another, there's a few different um, antimicrobial pee rags, but they have this pretty side. Um, that's the waterproof side that you're going to hold while you wipe. And this black side um, is the antimicrobial side, and that's the one you wipe with. Um, excuse me, when you're, so wipe, unlike what we were talking about earlier about um, UTIs with the bidet, for a cool cloth, you are gonna wipe from back to front. Just make sure that you don't touch your butthole with it. Um, when you're done with it, you're, all you have to do is hang it on the back of your pack or if you're like a rock or a tree or whatever, wherever you are where the sun is. Um, and the sun's UV rays actually sanitize it. I know it's like rocket science or something, um, but uh, if you're like me though, you can just like let it wave like a flag or you can um, snap it up like this um, for a little bit of privacy. 
So you had asked about how to wash it. So all you have to do is put a few drops of soap on it, get your water, scrub it, rinse it off with the water and it's good to go. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've used this thing and like, it's not, it doesn't smell. Like, like it does not smell, it's incredible. Um, the soap does wonders. UV apparently does wonders. The antimicrobial aspects do wonders. So um, this is definitely probably the coolest invention on the face of the planet. But another nice thing is you can use this when you're on your period. So blood is not going to impact it. So same thing, just soap and water after you use it um, and you're good to go. Um, let's see. Someone asked why back to front? You know, Anastasia had explained it to me and I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I forget. Um, it was <laughs> something about, so I think what it is is that when you do from front to back, you do eventually touch your butthole, right? Um, which normally when you're using toilet paper, that's okay because you're using it once and then getting rid of it. But if you're gonna be using this multiple times and then putting it in your vagina again, you don't, you don't ever want it to touch your butt. Does that make sense? Pretty sure that was why. Um, that makes total sense, I think. Okay. You can also, so cool cloths are not the end all be all. There are other types of pee rags. Um, I know some people who use bandanas. Unfortunately, those tend to smell a little bit after some time if you don't like really wash it well. So um, you can use one of those because I mean, they're like a freaking dollar, but um, do just keep in mind that they can become odorous after a while. Um, so your second option, which someone, someone else just mentioned, um, you can drip dry, do a little shake it off like Taylor Swift, you know, um, if you are prone to UTIs, this would not be probably the best method for you. Um, or if you're like me and just like, I don't know, I can never shake it all off like ever. And then you're just kind of like sitting in like urine pants, which kind of is gross, but, um, it sounds like someone else in this chat may have been like a champion shaker. So congrats, I am impressed. Um, you can also use traditional toilet paper. Again, you will have to dig a cat hole every time you pee, um, which is kind of a pain in the butt, literally. Uh, but um, if that's your more preferred option, please do it really and truly. Um, just make sure it's down six to eight inches. Um, and the last, so in the last three options, you know, you would pull down your pants and squat and pee. Uh, but if that option, option doesn't suit you for any number of reasons, like you might have a hard time squatting or you feel really uncomfortable exposing yourself um, each time you pee, there are things called uh, feminine, feminine urinary devices, um, also known as pee, uh, pee funnels. And so literally all you do is you stick the pee funnel into your pants and it like basically creates a penis for you. Um, and you can just pee as men do. It's kind of a really cool idea. I haven't tried one yet, uh, but they rule. <laughs> That's awesome, Kelly. Kelly, I'm so curious. Um, how do you, do you feel like it's pretty easy to clean while you're using that uh, in the back country? That's always been kind of my, my only hesitation about them. Yeah, I'm gonna unmute myself because it's gonna be a lot easier than typing. Uh, yeah, I like tried it in the bathtub a few times and I had a friend who she had trouble with hers, but, um, you know, the biggest fear was just like peeing all over myself. So <laughs> it's just like getting, getting it like pressed really good against your body, but I've never had issues. So I've never had my fear of peeing on myself, like come to fruition, which is great. So I highly recommend them. They're great, but there yeah. is a learning curve. I think you bring up a really great question again, is always trying your gear out at home first. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I just like have this mental image now of like sitting in your bathtub and giving it a try. That's awesome. Um, tinkle Bell, Shiwi. Oh, these are great. I've never heard of the Tinkle Bell before. Now I'm really curious. I want to look that up. Um, you know, honestly, <laughs> An alternative use for this is like if you're at a concert or something like an outdoor concert, <laughs> you can't just drop a trail. Um, it could have multiple uses. Anyway, I digress. Um, so <laughs> we're going, yay. Okay, let's talk about menstruation, which is why I think so many of you are probably here tonight. Uh, a reminder again, even if you don't think you're going to have your period, bring your supplies anyways. Um, yeah. 
backpacking can do weird things to your body. So just always have the backup always. <laughs> um, so just like you would do uh, when you poop, when you have your period, um, you're going to want to start by walking 200 feet away from trails, water sources, and campsites and start digging that six to eight inch, four to six inch wide, excuse me, um, cat hole. Once you've dug your cat hole, wash your hands. Um, so my two cents on that is with soap and water instead of hand sanitizer, because you're going to be sticking your, your fingers near or in your vagina and like Yes, hand sanitizer will remove some of those germs and viruses, but it's not going to remove the, um, the dirt, the debris. Um, and you do not want to be introducing any of that into your body. Um, so soap and water, in my personal opinion. So you have four different um, options for this. First, we have menstrual cups uh, or discs. Actually, I had only just recently heard about discs. So um, if anybody has more information about those uh, during this, that's awesome. They have different top sizes. Oh, sorry. oh that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so take that. that's so cool. Sorry, I was just reading the chat again. Um, so the great thing about menstrual cups and discs, um, they're so lightweight, they're so easy to pack. I mean, like, look at this thing. This weighs less than an ounce. And like, I could shove this anywhere, literally. Um, the other nice thing about cups and discs is that they can be worn for up to 12 hours at a time. Um, so unlike tampons, which, you know, you need to change every four to six hours to um, prevent toxic TSS, what is that, toxic shock syndrome, um, every 12 hours. So really, you're going to only have to do this two to three times a day, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm going to be talking about my Diva cup specifically, um, but there are so many menstrual cups out there on the market. Um, and actually I am in the resources, I have like a, a quiz um, link so that you can kind of decide what, if this is an option for you and decide which type of cup is a good fit for you. Um, so anyway, after you dig your cat hole, you're going to wash your hands. You're going to remove your cup pour the blood into the cap hole um, and then wipe with either your pee rag or your toilet paper. Um, toilet paper again, stick it into the hole nice and well. If you're using a cool cloth, like we talked about, little soap and water, rub it, you're good to go. Um, <laughs> if uh, Next, you're gonna clean your cup after each use. So if you have a menstrual cup or disc, It'll talk a lot about the kinds of soaps that you can use. Um, you're gonna want something that's unscented and also it's completely free from, or no, no fragrances, no harsh chemicals. So I really like Dr. Bronner's or um, there's something called like Summer's Eve that they have an unscented one. Um, pack that in a little reusable bottle. Um, so does anyone else have like, oh, sorry, no. Uh, once everything's clean, you'll insert the cup back in, wash your hands, and then cover up your cat hole. Um, I personally love this method uh, because you don't have to pack anything out. Um, and you also, again, you only have to change it two to three times a day. It's pretty great. Um, I also love that it's leak-free, uh, so I don't have to worry about <laughs> soiling my underwear or pants. Um, but if you haven't used a menstrual cup or disc before, there's definitely a learning curve. I am personally very new to them myself. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using them unless you've done it at home for at least three cycles first. Um, yeah. So I had a really hard time, like <laughs> both inserting and removing mine. Um, but I watched a bunch of videos the first time and talked to my sister, who's, who was the one that like made me get this for the, <laughs> for the uh, feminine hygiene kit. Um, but, uh, oh, I see, can be messy, especially heavy periods. Yeah, for sure. That's absolutely true. I, and I, I think when it comes to like messes, practicing is really helpful. Um, so getting really comfortable with how to use it and how to clean it um, is a pretty big part of that. But even still, there will definitely be mess, like you said. Uh, a little more chat. Hold on one second. Julia says, oh, 
Bless all the friends we've had cup chats with. <laughs> yes, indeed. Took me a few tried and cup. My husband had to take it out of me once because I couldn't grab it. Learning curve. Okay, yes. So I remember when I first was using a cup, I kept seeing these videos. They're like, relax and then go. And I was like, okay, whatever, I'll relax. But like, really, they mean relax because like the second you start to start like panic, all of a sudden you can't get it, it gets slippery. Um, I had a really hard time, like I had a really hard time gripping mine. That was, I'll just show you real quick. So here's my Diva Cup. Um, it's kind of amazing how much or how little blood we actually have in our periods, but um, it fills up. Okay, so you first are going to wash it, then fold it. So there's a few different folds. Um, there's like a C, a C fold. Um, my favorite is like the punch down fold. So it almost is like a little triangle. Um, and then you put it up your vagina, let it kind of like pop open and twist. And that twisting will create a suction so that it'll prevent any leaks from happening. Um, it's amazing. But the tricky part is when you are trying to take it out. So you put your fingers up. They have a stem, but that's not what you're supposed to pull on, which like, Anyway, um, you're supposed to pinch the base of it here. There's like these little grips um, and that will release the suction and then you can pull it out. Um, me personally, I still have yet to be able to like go up there and like get a grip on it because it's so slippery. Um, so I've always just used the stem to kind of start the process, get it kind of um, lower down in the cervix. And then I've been able to get it with the other hand pinch it and pull it out. Um, there are so many like chat boards all over the internet about this. Like <laughs> I, you, you will not feel alone in feeling like panicked. Um, if you, if you do get panicked, cause like so many people have been there. Um, let's see. Some people are in the chat. If it gets stuck, you can bear down. Yes, yes, okay. If you get stuck, you can bear down like you're taking a poop and the pu uh, the cup will move closer to your fingers so you can grab it. That's awesome. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, thank goodness for menopause and no longer having periods. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, okay. Somebody did ask about like sleeping on your side with it or just like maybe sleeping oh, in general, if you want to touch I on that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're using a cup like this, a Diva cup, um, the suction should be completely leak free, which is awesome. Um, I remember the first night I ever used mine, I was like, what is this? I'm not like worried about it, like leaking everywhere. Um, again, do practice a few times before, cause like, I know sometimes people don't always get the suction quite right the first few times. So give it some time. Um, when it comes to menstrual discs, they work a little bit differently and I can't speak from personal experience um, or honestly a whole lot of knowledge because I know like a friend of mine had asked me, is it supposed to leak? And I've heard that those can, um, depending on like the way your uterus is tilted sometimes. Um, so I don't know as much about those, but in terms of cups, menstrual cups, they shouldn't leak. And if it is leaking, then it's because it's not, um, the suction isn't quite there yet. Um, Let's see. For cups, the little holes at top need to be clear. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolute good point. Yes. Um, so Kelly is referring to, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's this like tiny little holes at the, um, the top here. If they're not clear, then they're not going to create that suction if they're like clogged. Um, so that's where coming at, you know, really washing your um, your cup every time. It's so, 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 so important. Um, not every menstrual cup is great for each person. Uh, that's why something at the end, like the, um, the cup quiz is really helpful. Uh, but also you might even get one and be like, it's still not great. Don't give up. If you, if you are willing to give this a try, um, take them out in the shower. Best tip ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to take that into advice for myself. That's awesome. Um, okay, let's see here. Are there any more comments about cups, um, people who use them, who love them, other tips and tricks? 
anything like that. While people are thinking about typing, I will also just say, I read that on average, women spend about $13 a month for one-time use menstrual products, which is kind of insane. Um, but that's not included in insurance, like health insurance, but I digress. Um, a diva cup or other menstrual cups cost between 20 to 40 bucks. So, and they last for up to 10 years if you take care of it, which is amazing. Um, if your health allows it, I would definitely think it's worth looking into. Um, but also it's not for everyone and that's okay. Um, Kelsey says, I found squatting with a cup made it easier to remove. Uh, I wonder if that's because you're kind of like, like naturally bearing down to with it. That's really clever. Um, I find it easier to insert when my cup is wet. Uh, I just run it, water over it, and put it in. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do you carry more than one cup to switch out? No, uh, just the one and done, which is awesome. So when you are um, taking it out that, you know, every eight to 12 hours or whatever, um, and you dump it, that's when you'll rinse it off and give it a really good wash. Um, and then you just insert it right back in, which is pretty cool. Again, even less things to carry. It's amazing. Um, don't feel it at all hiking. No. Oh my gosh. No. If it's inserted right. Um, I run with mine. Um, I know there was someone else here who was talking about doing a long-term race. Um, it's like a tampon in that regard. Like if you have a good fit, um, you should not feel it. In fact, I like, I've always felt much more comfortable with those than tampons, honestly. Any other questions about cups? Okay. If you think of something, we can ask them later too. Well, somebody uh -huh. asked about don't feel it at all hiking question mark. So do you know? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know I don't feel mine. If it's inserted right, um, you shouldn't. Um, but uh, just kind of like a tampon or anything else, it should be okay. Um, okay. No, I lost the chat. Okay, good. Uh, so your second option, traditional tampons and pads. Um, you're going to use the same method as you would with a cup. So dig your cat hole, wash your hands, wipe, insert that new tampon um, or put in a new pad. But then instead, you're going to have to store it in a bag to be packed out. Um, is it a bag works, uh, which is what I used to do before I made the switch to a cup um, or use any kind of like reusable bag, like a stasher bag. Um, but it's not fun uh, to have to carry out the tampons, like bloody tampons, but like you have to do it. It's not biodegradable. Even if something says it is like, it's not <laughs> like tampons and pads are not biodegradable in that setting. Um, they may be like over time, but not in a sense that like, like it's going to be a year and it's going to be gone. It's going to be like maybe perhaps years. So tampons and pads, you have to pack out. Um, Somebody asked about 100% cotton tampons. What about 100% cotton tampons? Oh, like in terms of like, yeah, no, you still have to pack them out. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the cotton doesn't necessarily degrade the way that like toilet paper does. Um, it's not water soluble in that way. In fact, it like holds all of it. So yeah, that's the the pain in the butt, but um the, you know this this is for most women this is the most comfortable way because it's what they're familiar with um it's easy to get access to any pads or tampons so um yeah anybody uh does anyone use tampons or pads in the backcountry and have like extra tips or tricks they'd like to share because i know this one is kind of like it's tough because if you don't want to use a cup um, but you don't want to pack out tampons and pads. It's like, well, okay, what, what do I do? Um, which we'll talk about in a minute too, but all right. Maybe we'll come up with something later, but unfortunately I think that might be just the unfortunate business of tampons and pads. Oh, wait, there's something in the chat. Uh, I used to wrap a plastic water bottle to put used tampons in. Oh, that's so clever. I love that. Oh, that's way less gross. 
<laughs> had, had a little extra shielding from it. That's so cool. So I actually know somebody who did the same thing with their um, paper toilet paper bag. So they took oh, okay. a Ziploc baggie and they duct tape around the outside of it so they don't have to look at the poopy toilet paper <laughs> or whatever you using it for. That is so, so clever. That's really cool. So like I said, I'm learning new things too tonight. That's awesome. Um, huh, very cool. One thing I did forget to mention too, uh, when you have tampons and pads that you are either putting in your Ziploc bag or your awesome plastic bag, um, then you, you need to store those like you would, um, you know, your food. So for bear, bear canister, bear a bag, even if you're not in bear country, those need to be stored with everything else. Um, I used to put them in, in, in scented nappy bags, <laughs> then in a big one home. <laughs> That's clever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Somebody also asked about putting um, tampons in wag bags. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, the only thing I would think of is if, yeah, that's, so I guess if you're not, um, if you haven't used your wag bag yet, so like wag bags are like a one and done kind of thing. So once you poop into them, you then have to close them in order for those crystals to start doing their magic. Um, but if you're doing both at the same time, or if like maybe you stored all of your tampons in a bag, first and then stuff them in your wag bag once you do take a poop um then that would be a cool way to do that oh i like that any other creative solutions here that's so cool oh, this is really this is great okay um so a third option that you can use i think this is kind of a relatively newer in, um, invention i wish they'd had it when i was a teenager my goodness uh, but period underwear so basically they are like underwear just with a built-in pad um, the more absorbent ones can carry up to five tampons worth of blood it's awesome um, so normal looks like a normal thing of underwear and then it's like lined on the inside um, with a super absorbent cotton um, if you're using a pee rag, you can actually just pee like you normally would um, until you want to change your underwear at the end of the day. Um, but if you're using toilet paper or when you're ready to change your underwear, um, you're gonna dig your cat hole, wash your hands, then you're going to wipe and deposit the toilet paper directly into the hole. Uh, <laughs> then you'll take off your soiled underwear and put on a new pair. Um, then you'll go ahead and, cause like no one wants to sit there and like be naked while they're cleaning their uh, period underwear. So you'll wash the underwear after that and then hang it on a rock or tree or your pack or whatever. Um, if you're going to use period underwear, you're going to need at least a minimum of two pairs so that you can let one dry while using the other pair. And personally, I wouldn't do it without three or four. Um, they can take a really long time to dry. Like I have put some just like in my laundry room and it's like taking a day to dry. Um, Another thing to know, I personally have had a hard time with shaping these. Um, again, I try everything because I'm, I believe in trying everything once, but um, I don't normally have a problem with chafing, but with those, because they're cotton, um, like intense cotton, it has created some chafing issues. Um, so just like with menstrual cups, please try this before you ever go into the back country to see if it's actually a good option for you. Um, let's see. A oh, couple questions. Do you know of a size inclusive period underwear brand? Can't really seem to find anything for larger. No, I'm only familiar with Thinks, um, but I'm going to look into this for you, um, Julia. If you, um, at the end of this, send me your email, I'll try and see if I can find something because that's, that's really frustrating. I'm sorry. One of these days, the outdoor industry will stop sucking. I guess they're not outdoor, but still. Um, even after cleaning, would you store them in a bear bag? The period underwear? Um, you know, I probably would, uh, just in case. Uh, maybe have like a extra like dry sack or something just for my period underwear, um, separate from the rest of my kit or something like that. Um, Dear Kate has up to 3x. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Tatiana. 
Um, so Julia, it sounds like the brand Dear Kate has more inclusive sizes. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. Um, okay, let's see. Has anyone else used period under we're in the back country, by the way. Um, and do you need tips or tricks for that? Does period underwear just absorb or help with smell too? So what I've noticed with my period underwear, I'm speaking from personal experience. I don't know if others have had this experience, but um, it doesn't smell when it's on, which is really cool. Um, so like, I don't know how they did it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but when you take it off, yeah, it smells until you wash it and everything like that. So theoretically, you should be able to be smell free until you're changing it, if that makes sense. Any other questions? I am in Australia and we don't have bears. So, <laughs> yeah, so I have no issues. Just keep them in a whip. <laughs> okay, I have so many questions for you about like what other... <laughs> what your backcountry like safety looks like for animals and stuff like that. That's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, the, <laughs> the last method I'm going to talk about is birth control. Um, you can use birth control continuously so that you don't ever have a period. Um, I would not recommend this to anybody though without consulting a doctor first. Um, or if you're over the age of 30, because I know your risk of blood clots drastically increases um, with any hormonal birth control. Um, it can also have other impacts. So please do consider this one carefully. Um, I did this personally for a number of years. Again, I'm telling you, I've tried like all these things, but um, <laughs> uh, I didn't, it was nice to like not have to worry about my period, but um, it later caused some other health, health problems. So talk to your doctor, what's right for my body isn't right for your body, that kind of thing. So uh, one other thing I want to know about birth control, you still have to have a backup because guess what? Like I said before, backpacking can change your cycle. So <laughs> even if you've used continuous birth control for like a long time without any periods, all that physicality can still change your body and you might have some spotting. So um, either having some liners or some period underwear uh, might be a really good backup method for this. Um, I see a few questions in the chat. Uh, you probably answered this, but how should you store a used pair? Oh, um, so I would wash it right away. Um, so back to period underwear real quick. So the second you take it off, wash it, and then it's just drying um, until you're ready to use it again, um, or using that dry sack if you want to stick it in there um, once it's dried and ready to use a new pair. Um, I might have missed this because I came in a few minutes late, but with regards to washing period underwear in the backcountry, how should one do that? Um, just like um, you would with a cool file, oh, you might have missed that too, sorry. Um, put a little soap on it, wash it with your water bottle, um, and it should take care of it. You kind of do have to like really get into it because like these were meant to really absorb things. <laughs> so they're a little bit of a pain to um, to wash, but um, just really give it a good scrub. Um, Australia, nothing really. Just keep away from snakes and spiders. But they are more scared of us. Apart from that, animals aren't a problem. That's awesome. <laughs> Gum trees that are very susceptible to Falling, falling anytime. Oh my gosh. So you need to check that your trees that you camp around. Gosh, that's so interesting. So if you go to Australia, beware of gum trees. I had no idea. Uh, Bree says, not for everyone and definitely talk to your doctor. Yeah, first, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm able to take three packs of birth control pills in a row for longer backpacking trips up to nine weeks of no period worries. Cool, very cool. Uh, Jessica says, I use the Nuva ring and have a period each month. If I know I'm going backpacking, I keep it in to skip that month. Cool. Okay. Um, I also bring tampons and pads just in case. Good idea. Um, Tatiana, reusable pads are also an option, smaller and easier to clean. 
Do you know of any brands that you love, Tatiana? Because I, I have searched so many times and like, I've never found any that have been like, that don't leak. I buy them on Amazon awesome. <laughs> Send me the link. I'm very curious now. Like I said, I, I like to try everything. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Just a few more things about your period, um, things that you might want to carry in your kit. Um, a Nalgene water bottle. I don't have mine with me. Anyway, you can fill a Nalgene water bottle with like hot water um, from your camp stove and then just put it on your, um, your abdomen to kind of help with cramps because um, that really sucks. I totally get that. Um, Midol and ibuprofen are always in my med kit. Um, I put the Midol in specifically, even though they, of course, never like put those in med kits, but um, I think they're an essential in my personal opinion. Okay. Oh, <laughs> thank you for sharing that link. Oh my gosh, I'm totally going to try this now. Thank you. Um, okay. This is all I have about periods. I would love to stop for a moment and open up the floor to any questions you might have about it before I move on, um, even before the Q&A at the end, because I think this is obviously kind of a hot topic. Melody says, is using a dry bag and hanging that okay with period supplies? Yeah, um, i.e. wet wipes, for sure. Um, again, you're just gonna wanna make sure that with a dry bag, um, if it has all your period supplies in it, that you are storing it the right way. Um, could go on and on for that forever, but bear canister, bear pole, bear locker. Um, if you're hardcore and are, you know, hanging the, <laughs> the ropes up and everything and lifting the bag um, up in the trees, that works too. I don't feel comfortable putting it in a bear can. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, I would still store it like you would store the other stuff. So if you only have a bear canister, um, I would just, like you said, put it in a dry bag first and then stick it in there. Um, but if you have another means to hang stuff, um, yeah, I know exactly, period with supplies with food. Um, if you have a way to hang your stuff in another way, then you can just like have your separate bag for that. So like if you have a bare pole, for instance, you have your food bag and then you have your period bag separate, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's kind of <laughs> not always easy to be a woman, is it? That's for damn sure. Um, okay. Thank you for the me. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jocelyn. Nice to see you virtually. Um, any more questions about periods before I move on? Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, just a few more things here and we'll open up for Q&A, but um, I want to talk a little bit about bathing. Um, you know, we talk all about pooping, peeing, and periods, but just like general hygiene sometimes is a little tough um, too in the backcountry. So while you can swim in lakes and rivers, it is best practice to do your like actual washing away from water sources to prevent contaminating it. So walk 200 feet away from your water sources. Um, and what I like to do, where is it? I like using my buff um, or like a, a bandana and I just put some soap, water and soap on it and just like get my face, get my arms, get my whole body and then just like rinse off with um, the water. And then you can use something like, um, like a little pack towel or <laughs> heck you could even use a sham wow. That would be kind of fun actually, um, just to dry off. And then afterwards, you know, that removes all the sunscreen, the sweat, the bug spray uh, that we don't want, excuse me, uh, don't want in the actual lakes and rivers. Um, so then after that, then I go swimming into the body of water if there is one available. Um, and it's really nice too, because then it prevents my hair from getting too oily. Um, but yeah, if you want, you can bring something like a pocket shower too. Um, I almost, I, I haven't used one personally, but I, it sounds like a really cool idea if you have the space and are willing to carry the extra weight. Um, in lieu of washing yourself with a buffer bandana, you can also use wet wipes. I know someone else had mentioned that earlier, um, but please remember you have to pack those out. Um, even if they say they're decomposable, not in the backcountry, like they're decomposable in like a landfill, like years and years, but not 
not in a quick time underground. Um, let's see, if you're com uncomfortable with oily or greasy hair, um, or you have a lot of BO, you're also welcome to use something like unscented baby powder or deodorant, um, whatever makes you feel most comfortable. I find that like, uh, you know, bathing and swimming like that, um, like I just talked about, usually work pretty well, uh, but everybody's body is different as well as their comfort level. Um, so please also remember that animals are attracted to scented uh, products. So make sure that if you do baby powder or deodorant, it's unscented um, and that you store them too. Uh, unscented lotion is also useful to have in case your skin gets dry and cracked. And also so frequently missed is like lip sunscreen. Oh my goodness. The number of times I've gotten burned on my lips is kind of silly. You would think I would remember every time, but um, also quick conversation about hair care. So bringing a really small comb um, is helpful. Anything compact that'll fit right into your uh, bag, your feminine hygiene kit, um, something that's lightweight too. In terms of wearing your hair, Braids seem to be a pretty easy go-to for a lot of women, regardless of their hair type. So there's, but you know, like there's no right way. So I know some people who wear their hair down like this and have no problems. I personally like get so knotted when I sleep at night, especially with like all the hats that I wear. So um, braids are a nice, easy way to kind of keep everything managed. Um, who was it? It was Nadia Mercado wrote a really good piece about how to manage curly hair for women of a range of different ethnic backgrounds. Um, that's also included in the resources page. Okay. Dental care. Oops. Dental care. Uh, process. <laughs> my light real quick. I'm realizing the sun's going down and I have a demonstration. <laughs> So just like when you dig your cat hole, start by walking 200 feet away from your campsite, trails and water sources. And you're going to do something called the eco spray. Uh, it looks like you're shooting your toothpaste out of like a whale's blowhole uh, and it helps spread that love and reduce the concentration in just one area. Um, so let me see if I can see my, um, my own face for a second so I can see if I'm doing this right. Okay, so you brush your teeth, you got your toothpaste kind of like stuck in there and then you go like this, like, you're like <laughs> blowing it out as you kind of like do a sprinkler motion. Um, <laughs> we can have like a whole party of the eco spray. Um, but again, that's just a leave no trace. We'll talk a lot about this, but it's the best way to uh, prevent damaging like any given area too much. Um, if you really want to be intense about the weight of your pack, you can cut off the handle of your toothbrush, or if you're like me and don't care that much, you can just get one of those travel toothbrushes and like they have the nice case on it. I love them. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, toothpaste. Just like I was talking about earlier with like biodegradable soap, toothpaste is really important um, in the back country. So Something like Dr. Bronner's or like even toothpaste tablets are really great. Um, I wouldn't use like Crest or something like that in the back country. It has a lot of harsh chemicals and like could really damage the area that you're doing your eco spray into. Um, see, do you see that? Okay, is plain baking soda appropriate in lieu of? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely have heard people of using baking soda instead of baby powder or unscented baby powder. That's absolutely, that's a great point. Um, okay. I, I don't know okay. if this is appropriate, but I think you can make your own toothpaste where it's like baking soda and coconut oil. Oh, stop it. And I'm, I like, I can't, oh gosh, my dogs are going to bark, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that's like, you'd have to double check the recipe, but I feel like that I was into like, really like being natural for a, a, a while uh, second. <laughs> and I was trying to do, cut that out. So oh, that's so I'm gonna have to get a recipe now. I'm very curious because like I'm allergic to everything. So I have a I have a hard time figuring this one out. That's really cool. Um a few other things you want to have in your feminine hygiene kit, in my personal opinion. Some kind of uh, you know, if you can afford it, merino underwear is a beautiful thing. So like TMI, but like I get really bad swass, sweaty butt. 
um, <laughs> when you're hiking and like that merino wool draws moisture away from your body um, and will kind of keep everything dry, which is really nice and also kind of prevent some chafing. I know someone was concerned about that earlier. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, Zip -lock they're actually a company that I really like for underwear. Oh, um, and they have bras too. And I, me and my from Melissa have, they're called Braun Win. I'll write it in the chat. Thank you. Um, but they have um, like merino wool underwear and bras and they're awesome. And you, I have worn mine for like three or four days in a row and not washed them. And they're, they don't smell like, yeah, you just dry them out. They're awesome. I can, benefits of merino wool, it doesn't smell. It's beautiful, so worth it. <laughs> that's that's I kind of really want to learn about them now. Um, oh, someone said that they use just like a drop of peppermint oil for their toothpaste. That's really cool. That's a good idea. Good for whitening teeth too. Huh? Who oh, no. knew? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, eyewear. Don't forget your contacts and glasses um, and solution if you need contact solution. Um, let's see, your feet, you want to prevent trench foot and blisters by making sure you air out your feet every day. So when you're like at lunch and just enjoying a nice meal with a view or whatever, take off your boots, take off your shoes and socks and just like let air out. And also like at camp, if you can, um, I personally really like bringing a really light pair of flip-flops so that I can walk around barefooted, um, to let that air out and really prevent damaging my feet. And then... Last thing I want to talk about that is just, oh, trail laundry. Um, so if you're going to be out in the backcountry for like an extended period of time, you're, you're, you will probably need to do your laundry. Um, please just remember when you do it, it's just like washing yourself. Make sure that you're, you wash your clothes 200 feet away from water sources. Okay? Um, all you have to do is wet your uh, laundry with your water bottle. Excuse me add some soap, scrub, rinse, hang dry um, on your pack or a rock or whatever. Um, okay, so this has been a lot of information. <laughs> I do want to pull again real quick just to kind of see where you're at now and then jump into the Q&A session. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, there we go. We'll do this first. So for those of you who have been or are planning on going backpacking, um, I feel confident in how to use my gear for backcountry hygiene. A, definitely, I could go into the wilderness this weekend and feel totally confident. Um, B, emerging confidence. I learned some new strategies tonight that I am really looking forward to implementing. Or C, unsure, still not there, but I hope to be someday, and that's totally fine. All right. Let's see here. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, for those who said unsure, still not there yet, connect with me. Um, let's talk more honestly. Like, I want to make sure that you are at that emerging confidence or like super rock star uh, later. Um, so I'll put my email address into the chat box, box at the end of this so that uh, if you want to reach out and touch on any other points, I would be so, so happy to do this because like, I want y'all out there so badly. Um, okay, question number two. Um, I plan on, I plan on going into the back country while having my period. A, I've already done it and we'll do it again. B, I haven't done it yet, but now I'm ready and feel prepared. Or C, still not there yet, which again, totally okay. That was 100% why I used continuous birth control because I was totally freaked by it for a long time. All right. my bad i forgot to put the share <laughs> i was like why, wait why i shared it no nope, no i did it. I the internet <laughs> um let's see okay so we've got some people who are starting to get there now okay haven't done it yet yay okay and if you're still not there yet 
Seriously and truly, totally fine. Um, okay, question number three. Uh, I plan to use the following menstruation management next time I'm in the back country. A, camp on the pads, B, menstrual cup and disc, um, or disc C, period underwear, D, birth control so you don't have a period, or E, something else entirely. Okay. All right. We got some kind of all over the board. This is awesome. Very cool. I am so curious to, if for those who are new to a different method, I would love honestly to hear how it goes for you. Um, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, cool. So one last activity, we're gonna do a whiteboard again. Um, oh, I said other, but I'm past my period. My UTA is our issue now. Ah, yeah. Come here, Gosh, why am I gonna go through so much with all kinds of things, this sucks. Okay, okay. Let's talk about UTIs too, maybe Debbie. Um, so I wanna connect if that's becoming a problem regularly for you. Um, so, we're gonna do a quick whiteboard exercise. So for those of you who didn't see it, our lovely ladies at Women Who Explore posted on Instagram the other day to promote this class. Um, they used this cover photo. Um, that was a picture of one of their brand ambassadors who gave them permission to use the photo. <laughs> um, it was hilarious. It was a photo of her squatting on a mountain peeing. Um, the, show, the photo showed absolutely no genitals, like not even, not even a butt cheek. It was just the side of her leg. And then Instagram removed the photo a few hours later without any warning or explanation. Um, I know I personally had a lot of feelings about it, um, but I wanted to kind of see real quick what you all felt about it. Like, I don't know. I feel like this has been kind of at the core of what women experience in the back country. So let me clear all that real quick. Um, you can either like use this text option or chat, type something in the chat box. I know for me, um, I personally have been shamed and embarrassed so many times, um, not by my personal friends, but by like other others um, when it comes to being in the back country, especially when I was like, you know, 18 years old um, and kind of learning things on my own. So it was very frustrating to see that pulled down. Let's see, we've got double standards. Oh, big time, yeah. Uh, patriarchal <laughs> health cave. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> love that inferno. one. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> I've had similar unfair violation and it restricted my account with my brand partners for three months. Jeez. And that's like your, li your livelihood. Annoyed by Instagram seems to continue body shaming. It's natural. God, yeah. Yes, it is. Women's bodies being always sexualized. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like where it's like, I mean, kind of to go back to what I think the follow up post said is like, how many photos do you see of bikinis and like scantily cladly dressed people? And that's, it's interesting when we start talking about a woman's body and its functions and like, how that just gets uncomfortable for people, but yeah, it's and a reality. Point, it's uncomfortable for them. Right. Like that brand ambassador wanted to share this photo. Like that was her body, her choice. So anyway, um, thank you all. I was just, I was curious kind of what that experience was like for you. Cause for me, it was not an awesome one. Um, Lots of online resources. I just realized like, I don't have this for you to like have tangibly yourself. So I, um, you can email this to me and I can put it in the email with the link to the recording for everybody. And if you want, I'll include your contact information too, Shannon. Please. Thank you so much. Um, but it just goes, um, I have a, where is it? I made a feminine hygiene kit, like packing list. If you ever are needing to remember any of this stuff. Um, 
along with that really great article I was telling you about Nadia Mercado um, for hair management. Um, leave no trace is like the end all be all when it comes to like <laughs> when in doubt, look at LNT. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to all the ladies at Women Who Explore. Um, for those of you who don't know, like they put in so much work behind the scenes, like honestly to bring their, this amazing community, so many opportunities and resources and stuff. So they've been really, really particularly kind and encouraging to me. Uh, they're just like all about like lifting up women and like supporting people. And it's, it's not even like a, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. It's like, they're just like Shannon, like we want to do stuff with you and like have been just very supportive. So um, from the bottom of my heart, so honestly, thank you so much. Like you guys are doing amazing things and I'm so grateful. Um, but yeah, that is all I have. Oh, wait, we didn't even do the Q and A cause I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I can't hear you, Lindsay. I'm sorry. Um, I love this last comment. It's as soon as I get off this call, I'm going to practice my spitting whale blow thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. I actually really loved that tip because I always wondered about that. So that was a really good tip and yeah. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah. So if anybody wants to unmute, uh, we are recording. I'll just say that, um, but you're welcome to unmute and hop on and share any comments, questions, or concerns, or you can drop them in the chat. I think we'll just give you guys all a couple of minutes. And then if nobody has any extra or additional questions, we'll wrap up with the giveaway. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm just reading some of these old messages. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to practice my spitting whale blow thing. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome, Lori. Oh, good. Yeah, I, this is a new experience to me. So um, any feedback you guys can give me is really helpful, especially since we're going to be doing this again in a few weeks. Um, things that work, things that didn't work. I'm always very happy to change my ways. As you all know, because I've used period underwear, birth control, tampons and pads, and a menstrual cup while backpacking. <laughs> um, let's see. Other than femme items, stuff, et cetera, what's a good first aid kit to bring? Honestly, if you, whatever, <laughs> I'm a terrible so, businesswoman. Go on my website and look at the first aid kit stuff. And if you have that stuff already and you have like a dry sack bag, make your own first aid kit. Like that's a really good way to do it. Um, or if you want to buy a pre-kit, you can do one of those too. But um, a lot of things you can get in like bulk or things like that, if you're going to need a lot of them um, and kind of tailor it to your needs. But you definitely need to have, you know, the basic like things to control blood, um, medications, especially, oh my gosh, please bring Benadryl, whatever you do. I can't tell you how many times, like, I know people who have been bitten by a bug or had like an unexpected allergic reaction. So Benadryl is definitely like a lifesaver. Um, yeah. Thanks guys. I'm a teacher who takes students hiking. So great to hear what others use. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you had mentioned shoe, oh, where'd it go? You mentioned shoes while at your campsite. Crocs. <laughs> clip onto the outside of the pack so easily and great for walking around camp if you want a, something light with a thicker sole absolutely I know for a long time people were like joking about how you can eat crocs which like I totally wouldn't do but it's kind of funny that that's not a toxic thing to do um, I missed the beginning but any tips on squatting to pee I'm learning and it's still uh it's a bit embarrassing but I still uh, get my okay my one of my sisters didn't know how to pee in the woods until like a few months ago. Um, so <laughs> when you, let me see if I can see my, so when you are, I'm gonna try to squat on my chair for a second. When you're squatting, pull your underwear and your pants way out this way and kind of squat back so that you don't hit your underwear and your pants. Um, so just give it a really good tug forward um, and like aim down. <laughs> if you're good at twerking, um, that's definitely a good method to use. But we had been talking about feminine urinary devices too, or like um, pee funnels. So if you practice that a bit and you find that like 
you're still kind of hitting it, that might be a really good option for you. Um, do, do, do. I had my first aid kit organized in a way that I can easily pull out the smelly stuff like ointment to put in my beer. That's clever. Yeah. That's very clever. Huh, I've never actually put my medical stuff in a bear canister and now I'm reconsidering my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, having a safe space to talk and joke about this stuff is, <laughs> yeah, oh, good. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, we all, uh, who doesn't have a funny period story, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> when you backpack, do you prefer leggings or hiking pants? And hiking pants are... Uh, are hiking pants better at moisture wicking? It totally depends. Um, I hike with both, honestly. Um, moisture wicking, it doesn't matter if it's leggings or hiker or like specific hiking pants. Um, it's the material that it's made out of. So uh, synthetic materials or merino wool are going to be um, the most moisture wicking. Um, if you can find synthetic options that are used, I think those are better from an environmental standpoint. Um, but in terms of just like how it works, um, yeah, just synthetic um, polyesters and uh, merino wool. I like my leggings personally. Um, I wish there'd be pockets in them, but you know. Uh, I find over the counter AZO, Azo. Oh. A necessity to carry in case I get symptoms of a UTI. It helps with it. I'm so curious. So what is it? What is Azo? That's really interesting. Gosh, I'm so sorry, Debbie, that you've had to even use that ever. That sucks. Pepto, Pepto-Bismol, by the way, is a really great thing to put in your, your uh, med kit. Uh, thanks. That makes more sense. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, and everyone who joined these <laughs> moments make my heart so full. Oh. <laughs> I have yet to go backpacking, but this was very informational and I would feel more confident going to, oh good, yay. Uh, do scented medications need to be in bare canisters all the time? Um, the inhaler and it seems scented to me. Oh, you know, I, I use my inhaler. It does have kind of like that tinge. I, I've never had a problem with it, but if you're worried about it and you want to sleep well, um, Always just throw it in. I know, like I had, a, I went with a friend who had diabetes, and he had like those sugar tablets. Um, we always pack, pack those in the bear canister. But um, that's a good question about the inhaler. That's interesting. Uh, anything smelly? Yeah. <laughs> is it true that cotton is awful to hike in? I'm trying to avoid extra plastics because the earth is dying. Girl, Julia, you are a woman of my heart. Um, so I want more natural fibers. Um, Depends, right? Uh, so <laughs> if you have a hard time naturally with chafing, um, maybe you can get away with like a cotton shirt, but maybe you don't want to do cotton bottoms or find it used um, or do merino wool because merino, merino wool is awesome. Um, a lot of outdoor companies are starting to use recycled um, polyester, which is, thank God it's about damn time, but um, I know Smart will just launched a campaign. They're actually have, asking people to send their used socks back to them so that they can recycle them again too. Um, so there's, there's exciting things coming about that. Um, so I want my natural fibers. Yeah, merino wool. I second Honestly. merino wool. Yeah. I've always oh, yeah. liked to hike in merino wool. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a, like a Smart wool shirt and like it's this nice 120 weight for like a, you know, cooler or warmer seasons. Like, it's like wearing a cloud. I just am so excited. Uh, team leggings, especially leggings with lots of pockets. Okay, Kathleen, can you send me your list of where you get leggings with pockets? Because uh, mom girl needs to know. Okay, Supposedly thanks. Prana, but I don't know. I've yet to know about them, so. I sell Prana and like, which, <laughs> okay, so like the, the Summit joggers have them, but like, so yeah, the Summit pants have them, but. Other than that, they're leggings, not so much. Uh, I like to carry a fanny pack when I backpack to keep in, because the pockets are on the backpacks are usually too small. So I keep a fanny pack with like some snacks and stuff. And it's a little bit easier to like ex access stuff that way. Uh, it's obviously an extra pack, but it's one way. And then if your phone fits in there, like that's a good way to access your phone. Um, 
but that's like sort of my only tip. That's very cool. Do you have suggestions on natural laxatives to help poop? I've had poop right before. Ah, you know what? I don't, but let me look into it. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of that question real quick um, so that I can respond back to that brief. Uh, and apparently there's a lot of leggings with pockets. Sweaty Bettys, Lululemons, and <laughs> Eric's climbing leggings. So we are behind the times. <laughs> Am I dating myself? <laughs> I'm getting on. Uh, Arturic. Arturix has climbing. Oh my gosh, what? Uh, this is awesome. Okay. Um, if there aren't any more questions, let's do the giveaway. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna go to the regular view. Oh, uh, just a reminder: giving away a cola cloth and a bed. I think we have some people drop off. Uh, let's see, just pick a number one through 40. Eight. <laughs> you don't have to go too far down. One, two, three, four, five. Abigail Dettles, Dettles. All right. So Abigail, um, if you could send me your email, well, actually, if you just want to connect with Shannon, her email is inf info at Alpine Sisters, correct? Is that I the best one? one. On okay. I don't check that one nearly as much, Alpine Sisters. Um, and this is for everyone too, customers. Or, uh, yeah. Um, if you ever have questions or stuff like that uh, and want to connect. But yeah, Ab yay, Abigail. Um, yeah, send me your stuff. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you again, Lindsay, so much. Thank you everyone oh, for coming. I'm so grateful you. that so many people were like down to learn and have these conversations. Like I really appreciated all the input you all gave. Like I learned a lot more tonight. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Th yeah, thank you so much to everybody for joining. And then just, yeah, thank you, Shannon, for taking your time and putting all the effort into this beautiful presentation. Um, we are having it again on May 12th. So if you have any friends who you think would want to join, we just put the class up since this one was full. Um, and yeah, we're just, we have, a, we have, a, I don't know, for somebody, if you guys know, we have trips. We have an intro to backpacking trip. I know somebody said they wanted to get into backpacking. Like we have some of that stuff going on. So you can check out our website. We have uh, a back country safety class coming up on April 26th and then a bear safety class on May 4th. I believe it's a Wednesday. Um, and both will be super great. And then we're starting like a four week yoga session on May 18th. So all that stuff's online. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you guys join us. So, uh, thank, thanks again, everybody for coming and I'm, I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>